These people are terrible. Yes, uh, Ted Bundy, one of the worst criminals, serial killers in history, but even he would probably be, uh, these people would probably give him the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, starting off our list today, we have Harold Shipman, aka Dr. Death. He was, as the name implies, a doctor, practicing in the UK between the years 1972 and 1998. During his time as a physician, Shipman developed a great fondness for two things, pethidine, a synthetic opiate, and death. Not his death, of course, but the death of his patients. During his time in the medical field, Shipman caused the deaths of at least 218 patients, but the real number is likely much higher. He ended their lives by administering lethal doses of morphine, and for a long time, his reign of terror went unnoticed. It wasn't until his addiction to substance abuse came to light that he was suspected to also have an addiction to killing. Based on the sheer number of patients who were just dropping dead in his care, hospital staff finally came to the realization that something was just not right. He was arrested after the daughter of one of his victims caught him trying to write a will for the victim, claiming him as the beneficiary. He got too greedy. He was convicted in 2000 and died in 2004 after taking his own life in prison. The motive for his crimes remains unknown, but many people have speculated that he took the lives of those he personally saw as being a burden to society, which makes the way he died pretty fitting if you ask me. Next on the list we have Nanny Doss. Nanny Doss was given the nickname the giggling granny and when you hear about what she did that nickname is gonna take on a much more sinister tone than you know it might sound nanny Doss appeared to be this loving and caring woman but beneath her friendly facade there was something much darker over the course of several decades Doss committed a string of killings she poisoned four husbands her own mother sister and even her grandchildren her method of choice poison Doss used deadly substances like arsenic and rat poison to carry out her crimes all while maintaining this outwardly nurturing persona that kept suspicion at bay for years. I mean, who on earth would suspect a sweet old granny of taking the lives of her own family members? It's just icky. It wasn't until 1954 that authorities began to unravel the truth behind the deaths that seemed to follow Doss wherever she went. Traces of poison were discovered in the victims' bodies, leading to Doss's eventual arrest. In 1955, Nanny Doss pleaded guilty to having taken the life of her fifth husband and was handed a life sentence behind bars. But her tale didn't end there. In 1963, she shocked the world once again by confessing to her other crimes, providing chilling details about her methods. Doss spent the remainder of her days confined to a prison cell. She died in 1965. Next up, we have H. H. Holmes, yet another really bad dude. A pharmacist who purchased a hotel only to turn it into a mansion, only to use that mansion as a gruesome playground designed to inflict enormous amounts of mental and physical pain and distress on anyone unlucky enough to walk through its doors. It was affectionately referred to as the Killing Castle. The building was equipped with trapdoors, gas chambers, and a basement crematorium. The exact number of people who died at the hands of H.H. H. Holmes is unknown, but the numbers are said to be in the hundreds. Holmes himself claimed to have ended the life of 27 individuals, but only nine were confirmed by law enforcement. I feel like I'm leaning towards the hundreds for this guy. I mean, he took the trouble of converting an entire three-story building into some kind of disturbing tour tutor chamber. Yeah, I can't say that word either. Next up, we have one of the creepiest cult leaders in history, Rock Theriot. Rock Theriot was the twisted leader of a cult known as the Ant Hill Kids, which he founded in Canada in 1977. Under his manipulation, Theriot's followers were convinced that he possessed divine powers and that they would be the chosen survivors of an impending apocalypse. Eventually, the group isolated themselves from the outside world, creating a closed, secretive community behind the guise of spiritual enlightenment. Rocks subjected his followers to extreme physical and psychological torment. He enforced strict and very bizarre rules, becoming increasingly erratic in his behavior over time. He became more violent and controlling, inflicting harm on his followers in the name of discipline and purification. Some cult members even went through waking amputations. This guy actually claimed to possess magical powers that he believed could reattach severed limbs. His reign of terror eventually resulted in the death of one of his many wives. He was arrested but somehow got a light sentence 
And after his release, yeah, he went right back to doing what he was doing before and was rearrested. He died in prison at the hands of another inmate. Something smells fishy. Albert Fishy. Well, actually, Albert Fish. I'm gonna stop now. Albert Fish was a man of many names, among them the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Gary Man, the Boogeyman, you get it, man. Fish was a terrible person, as are all of the people on this list. His crimes consisted of stealing, violating, killing, and eating young men and women. When he was caught, he actually admitted that he would drink young people's BLOOD and make their body parts into stew. He was disgusting and seriously thin the head. Again, like everyone else on this list. At one point during his crime spree, he actually sent a letter to the mother of one of his young victims detailing his crimes and how it had taken him nine days to consume the corpse. This guy makes me sick. He was found guilty of killing three young people, although he claimed the number to be closer to 100. He died via electric chair on January 16th of 1936 at the age of 65. Thank God, good riddance, burn in hell. Bradford Bishop. Worst thing about this guy is that he's still out there. I mean, he'd be about 88 years old now, so there's a good chance that he's dead. And he wouldn't be much of a threat now anyway, at that age, but uh, his crime was so severe, it's just maddening that he never had to face the consequences. A former foreign services officer for the United States, Bishop decided to carry out a heinous crime on March 1st of 1976. Apparently, he'd been disappointed over not receiving a promotion at work. After informing his secretary that he wasn't feeling well, he left the office early, stopped at a bank, took out cash, then went to the hardware store. He bought a pitchfork, a shovel, and a can of gasoline, which is not suspicious in the slightest. Got back home around 8 p.m. and proceeded to take the lives of his wife, his mother, and his three sons. Afterward, he drove their bodies to a secluded wooded swamp, set them on fire before vanishing without a trace. Moving right along, we have Ahmed Saraji, an Indonesian serial killer known as the Black Magic Killer. His killings began in 1986 after he claimed his late father appeared to him one night in a dream and demanded that Amen kill no less than 70 women. For the next 13 years, Amen was hell-bent on completing the task. He practiced witchcraft and lured many of his victims in with the promise that his magic would solve all of their problems. He brought them to a field and buried them up to the waste, which he told them was all part of his magical process. It wasn't. He killed them by forcibly restricting their airways, and after they died, he drank their spit before burying them completely. When he did this, he made sure the heads of the women always pointed towards his home. He believed that the placement of his victims along with the consumption of the women's saliva enhanced his powers. I don't know about all of that, but it for sure enhanced his psycho, in my opinion. In 1998, police discovered some of Ahmed's victims in the field, and he was arrested and convicted of 42 killings. One of his three wives, who were all sisters by the way, were arrested as well for being an accomplice to the killings. She was sentenced to life in prison while Ahmed was sentenced to death. In 2008, Ahmed was executed by firing squad. Much like Ahmed, they showed no mercy. Right, the next despicable prick on our list is Christopher Lee Watts. Pretty sure this guy could make anyone's stomach churn. A man who took the life of not just his wife, but his daughters as well. His totally innocent, trusting daughters who couldn't see a bad bone in their father's body. And on the outside, nobody else could either. Watts seemed like an upstanding, everyday, suburban family man, but that wasn't the case. Most of you know how the story goes. It was so shocking that people were completely horrified and dumbfounded. This became one of the most talked about criminal cases in recent history. And what sets this one apart is all the video footage we have, not just of the police questioning Watts right after he disposed of his entire family, not just the interrogation footage, but the footage of the everyday, seemingly happy parts of the Watts family's life as well before this whole incident. Like how could this man who seemed to have it all, a nice home, beautiful wife, two great daughters. How could he decide to end all of their lives just to start a new one 
with a different woman. It's uh, as disturbing as it gets. Next up we have Yang Jinhai, a Chinese serial killer who was responsible for a lot of deaths. In 1988 and again in 1991, Yang was sentenced to labor camps for theft. In 1966, he was sentenced to five years in prison for attempting to violate a young woman. He served three years before eventually being released in 1999. Bad idea! For the next four years, Yang killed at least 67 people and violated at least 23 women. Commonly, Yang would enter family homes in the dead of night and then kill each family member one by one, using axes, hammers, and shovels, and on many occasions he would violate the women in the family before ending their lives as well. His motive, other than being a sick piece of shite, revenge, because his girlfriend had broken up with him after learning about his theft and attempted violation charges. He blamed society, and because he was walking garbage, he took his anger out on those in positions he craved, married men and women along with their daughters and sons. He was eventually arrested on November 3rd of 2003 and was sentenced to death by a firing squad. The execution took place on February 14th of 2004 and was most likely incredibly painful, but nobody feels bad about that. Finally, we have a complete and total creep, as if the rest of the people on this list weren't. Issei Sagawa. This guy is most infamous for killing the killing of Rene Hardevelt in Paris in 1981. He didn't just take her life though, he also ate parts of her body. After being found unfit for trial by French medical experts in 83, Sagawa was sent to a psychiatric institution, but he was deported to Japan in 1984, where, to the shock of many, he was declared sane by Japanese authorities. French authorities had apparently failed to provide the necessary case files, uh, so Sagawa just kind of walked. And not only did he escape incarceration, but he also went on to write a memoir titled In the Fog, where he recounted the details of his crime in detail. A very icky story. That was gross. That was really, really gross. Yeah. You think yeah. you guys will be able to sleep tonight? Um, I, yeah. Um. Always watch your backs out there. Be safe. Yeah. Don't be paranoid about like everybody. Uh, you know, you don't want to be one of those and people. And don't but, be yeah. like these guys. No, certainly like, see, not. But like, actually, that's that's that should uh, be the number one goal. Yeah. I've been your host, Hannah. I've been your host, James. Ah, so close, you guys. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>